Hey everybody, welcome to Borderline Board Offline. Today we're unboxing Ultimate Tenaris Adventures. And I had to take my camera off the tripod just to be able to show you the size of this box. It's pretty unusual. You know, normally I think, you know, a box like this would be in a the coffin format where it's, you know, cut this in half, put it side by side, and then you've got like that coffin layout, the, the ultra long box. My Kingdom Death or Madara, stuff like that. Instead, for this one, it's more like they stack them on top of each other, so it's very, very tall, uh, but it has the kind of standard width and um, width and, and depth here. So pretty, pretty interesting, or width and length, I guess. Pretty interesting version of the box, so very excited to get into this. Let's do it. Okay, opening this up. Oh wow, oh wow, okay. Hold on. This is interesting, I did not know. Okay, all right, so well, I gotta adjust the camera here so you can really see what's going on. It's actually open down the side here. Let's, let's make a small adjustment. Okay, so here we go. So I thought I was gonna be digging in from the top, but instead you can see it's actually along the side. And let's actually take a look at the artwork on the side of the box here. Some gorgeous artwork here for, it does look like there's some evil people. Those, who knows? This side, we've got some more awesome looking people here. Great, okay. So this this was, by the way, I did, I did not uh, order this off of Kickstarter. This was sent to me by uh, Dragori Games. So, I know very little about this, uh, you know, other than the research I did back when it was originally on Kickstarter to figure out if it was something that I'd want to feature on the channel. And so now, uh, very excited to see what's going on here. So let's let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to change the camera again just so we can have the top down for the stuff we're looking at. So obviously we got the punch outs here. So there's only, what, six punch-out boards, at least right here. All right, and this, you know, looks like some terrain tiles. Punching out very easily. Not hanging up, well, not yeah, not hanging up. You can see just kind of falling out. That's great. That's what you want to see. Good stuff. Some interior and exterior. Oh, look at those spikes. Nice. Skeletons. I do notice it doesn't look like the terrain has any markings on it to like for organizational purposes, but there's not a whole lot compared to a game like, uh, I guess, Frosthaven or something like that. So we'll see how all that's going to work. That's interesting. Now we're just going to work our way down from the top. All right, so interesting. So we've got a bunch of empty spots here. I'm guessing this is organization for the punch, the stuff that we'll punch out. We've got a couple of D20s here. We've got, obviously... Uh, the clips that go on the bases to, you know, for, to help it be easy for you to figure out who's who with the colors. Some cool looking cubes here. Really like the translucent colors. All kinds of different colors in there. Okay, looks like a dwarf maybe. Some great, these are really sturdy feeling miniatures. What is this guy? He is eating that guy, I'm pretty sure. 
high protein diet. Is that a boar maybe? Nice. I oh, gotta love the dual wielder. Very cool. Oh, a ton more minis now on this one. No extra space at all. Uh, we're not going to pull all these out, obviously, but let's take a look at a few. Look at this guy. He's got eight legs. There we go. Uh, look at this guy. Oh, yeah. Wow, that is cool. It's a lot of detail on these. If you're into painting, I think you'd really... You gotta make some... Oh, look at this guy. Make some cool stuff with these. Always a fan of the uh, Cthulhu-esque monsters. This guy's got four arms, though. Nice. Some sort of elemental here. Very cool. Oh, look at this. This big fella here. What's he carrying? Those are meat hooks? Giant. Are those arrows sticking out of him? <gasps> they are. Look at that. He's taking some shots and he's still going. Oh, damn. Okay. All right. Well, like we got the oh, Grim Reaper or something up here. Look at this guy. There are some very cool miniatures in this. That's awesome. Multi. So are these? What? What's? This is interesting. Why all of a sudden with the multicolor stuff? We've got so and really striking. Like, not muted at all. These are very striking colors. That bright yellow, this green. Sort of uh, Flintstone push pop orange here. Make sure you put that in there the right way. That sword might, don't want anything to happen to that. Got this. Bright blue. That staff he's carrying is pretty awesome. This, I'm guessing a werewolf probably. Got this purple down here. Let's look at this one. We got this more brown. Whoa, look at this. Is this like a Cerberus here? Looks like three headed. Looks like it's some kind of wolf. So, probably Cerberus. What are these barrels down here? Okay. And then these look like they're prisoners of some kind. Yeah. And of course, no idea what's going on here, but almost looks like a medical the medical symbol, the staff with the snake on it. Looks like we got some kind of farmer here. And look at her. And she's about to screw somebody's day all the way up. I wonder if she's flying or jumping. Okay, so now we move on. We've got this box that says cards. 
Oh, oh, missing a couple things that came out down here. What's this? Odolin, Sands of Destruction. Hack and Slash, Alternate Mode. Okay. Well, so this looks like it's actually some sort of chart for the game. This looks like it's an advertisement for something coming soon, 2024. Get your treasure. Discover and explore your next dungeon crawl with innovative open world system. Awaken your avatar. Amplify your adventures with the four teller premium audio narration. Over 30 hours of audio. Nice, okay. This four tell the Foreteller app usually does a really good job with the voice acting as well. From I only use it for, I say usually, I guess I should clarify, I only use it for Medora. But the voice acting that I heard in it was, was, was pretty good. I liked it. How does this, there we go, just like that. Whoa, look at this guy. Nice. Very nice. He's going to be terrifying to fight, I'm sure. Okay, so we are obviously not going to go through all these cards. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what's inside here when you open it up. So here, Katara the Barbarian, Brute. Mighty Blow, Berserker Strike, Barbaric Rage, Whirlwind. So obviously you got abilities here. Brutality down here. Uh, then you got your movement, defense, basic attack, and hit points attributes. Back here we've got some puzzles. Puzzles are found in the Relic Quest. Usually there are rewards for puzzles you can solve. Borrow unused cubes to note your solution on the grid below. Take no more than two to three minutes to solve each one. Compare it to the solution to see if you got it right. Interesting. All right, then we've got Qatar, the Barbarian. So that's the guy we're just looking at there. Uh, so we've got, you know, pay three hit points. Different stuff going on here. These are some sort of ability or probably ability cards here, and then this, you know, gold loot, all right? Right here we've got the long sword. So this is definitely, yeah, these look like they're gonna be legendary. Okay, you can see how right there, the color change. So this side we've got some legendary items, equipment, that sort of stuff. This is something else here. And we've got some level three items. Oh, and this guy. Whoa. Check him out. All right, moving down here. Full size cards. Master Brute. Benefit an enemy and one of you takes an enemy and one of you takes five damage, then make a copy of one of this hero's original primary attacks. Okay. And 140 hit points, plus three roll blessed. Reaper, phylactery, maimed, undead companion. Use any undead figure to represent it. If there is another undead on the grid, deal plus two damage. Whoa. All right, and then here we've got Head, Furious Bite. So these seem like, the way these are reading, I wonder, not there, but this one, the Lich, the red dragon. So these have to do with uh, the boss fights or, or fighting enemies, at least. Um, maybe, maybe these are like the AI cards. If that's something that's used for for this, like I said, I'm going into this blind. I, for the most part, very, very excited to experience it. This is definitely exactly the sort of game. I mean, y'all seen what I have on the channel. This is exactly the sort of game. Heroic action. Okay. 
Garrett Michelin. <laughs> Week three, okay. Quest power. Each hero starts the quest with plus five HP. You can equip any type of weapons or armor. Flask. Start the campaign. Your team has just finished a dungeon raid. It's time to return to your base, located at the city of Fisherman's Wharf, and split your loot. When you are ready to begin this adventure, head back to the first adventure of the campaign book, page 5, as indicated by the letter on the front part of this card. All right. Zafar, the Fallen Angel. Envelope of Secrets, Warriors, Tier 3. All right, well, we're not going to mess with this too much. So that's going to be secret stuff, apparently. The art in this game is just phenomenal. Archer, Violent. Okay, so I'm guessing this is maybe an enemy that you're fighting. Nice. Very nice. Okay, let's get to the final section of this unboxing. So brute, commander. Some of these are like classes. Okay. Here we've got a board. So this might be like the, I don't know if this would be an actual PVE board or if this is more PVP. But looks very cool you got this almost score track around the outside which makes me think maybe this is more of a pvp thing anything on the back similar setup on the back with the score or whatever it is around the side okay looks like we've got a map of imperial tenaris It's got kind of a Europe feel to it, doesn't it? And that's Europe and there's Africa type thing. Gives you instructions for a world phase down here. Assembling stage, playing stage, one turn per player, using a quest card, unlocked regions only, spending stage, making the log, marking the log, okay. Character deck, discard pile. Back here, this is the city phase. Assemble the map. Each player plays their cards in one turn. Spend um, earned cubes. Uh, wrapping up, okay. Draw one loot card per cube for each one. Draw one loot card per cube. For each three cube, draw one extra loot card, okay. Natural lab, tavern, weapon shop, iron hand post. Okay. Man, this is really getting me stoked to play this. Here's a quick start guide. I wonder how well that works. I need to do some research to see and, and you know, you just give it a shot, I guess. I know some games that are real complex, uh, that they're, or I should say really in-depth like this, that have quick start guides. Sometimes it's better just to do the, the main the main rules, but we'll see. But So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pages for the quick start. Here we've got campaign log, campaign perks for warriors, strategists, spies, diplomats. Over here, phase calendar, list of quests. And it looks like there's like 82 quests there. Uh, the regions... War points for warriors, strategists, diplomats, and spies. And then the fact log, whatever that's going to be. And then any notes as well. All right, here's the... Okay, so you've got a PvP rulebook. I'm glad they split it up. Because that is going to prevent you from having to parse through... Like, having all those rules combined would be a real pain in the butt, I think. Uh, table of contents, introduction. How to use. The PvP game mode has a simple concept... And intuitive mechanics, you don't need to memorize all the rules. However, the game also has many specific rules because it becomes because it comes with several heroes, each with its own set of unique attacks. Okay. 
All right. But the PvP rules really, let's see, start. We'll just say it starts here on page three. And you do have solo team deathmatch. So you play it solo. So this is a scenario here, capture the orb. It's an appendix, commander combat role. So I think the main rules go to page 25. But here's some, these look like some examples as well. So something to keep in mind. The actual rule book is, starts here on page six. And look at this, I mean, it is a beast. Goes all the way back really into the 80s. So appendix G, rules to be unlocked. So if you, if, I'm sure the appendixes are important, but if we don't count the appendixes, then 66 pages. So still, there's a lot going on here. This is gonna be a huge endeavor. We are going to create a instructional series for this, so keep that in mind. All right, so then we've got extras here. Um, what all would be in here, I don't know, but we've got chapters and, I mean, this looks like a lot of, we got maps here. Uh, so this is scenarios and stories I'm guessing are in here. Chapter five, yeah, so some good stuff going on there. The weeks one to two, the epic campaign. Uh, so this has, yeah, this is a table of contents, adventures and quests. So that's what this is all about, our adventures and quests in here, okay? And then here we've got weeks three to four. Okay, so yeah, so weeks one or two, weeks three to four, weeks five to six. And I mean, this is, let's see, in weeks one to two, so I'm guessing this is the main campaign here. So yeah, so it looks like weeks one to two, you've got 219 pages of content here, all right? Then weeks three to four, another 219 pages of content. And then weeks five and six, Again, 218 pages of content, that's crazy. That's, okay, that's very interesting that all three of these are the exact same length. Uh, and then whatever this extras book is, which I'm sure will become clear as we learn the game, uh, you've got 137 pages of content there. So yeah, this is Tenaris Adventures, and I am very excited to get involved in this, to get into this. Uh, basically, the way I see this going is right now I'm doing an instructional series for Dungeon Universalis as well as the Gambler's Chess expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. Once I wrap one of those up, because those videos are going back and forth, alter alternating back and forth, once I wrap one of those up, I think this will be the next thing that I tackle. So uh, be sure to come back, check all that out, and until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline. <laughs>